What's up my bro, Tundrum here, back with another video, and today I'm going to be ranking all blue cantrips in Magic the Gathering. Um, so pretty much, a cantrip from having it is any card that is one blue mana, that reads in its text, draw a card, do something else, that's an instant or sorcery. So all of these cards here fell under the definition of cantrip. And so I'm going to be tearing them. So we have the literal garbage tier. This is like so bad. Never use it. Not even playable in a bad sealed deck. Literal garbage. Mediocre. These cards are playable. Probably won't get anywhere in Constructed unless it's a very specific deck. But might be playable in some sealed decks. Solid is a solid cantrip. This could see play. In a variety of places, from standard to maybe even a format like Modern or Legacy. But normally this would just be nice in a sealed deck-based environment or solid. Yeah, solid. In a standard or modern deck type thing, or commander. Insane. These are really strong cantrips. Um, see consistent play in a lot of places. For example, anywhere from standard to modern to commander. Just solid cards. Maybe not ban-worthy, but real strong, really good cantrips, and then we have broken, the broken tier is, whew, these are the insane cards, these are cards like, that have been banned up there with some of the strongest cards in Magic, um, yeah, cards that likely have been banned or just completely format warping, go in almost every deck you can put them in, um, broken tier is the very strongest, but yeah, that's the tiers, let's get into it. So first up we have Opt. Opt, it's just a one mana blue instant scry one draw a card. Opt, I think, belongs in the... I reckon it, I reckon it's insane. Because it, it's not, but it is. Like, it sees so much play in a variety of areas. It's not insane. It'll be either on the top end of solid or the bottom end of insane. But just one mana instant, scry one, draw a card is real good. Next up we have peak. One mana instant, look at target player's hand, draw a card. Um, I reckon peak probably belongs in the mediocre tier. Um, one mana, look at target player's hand, draw a card is not strong, but it is instant speed. For example, they untap, um, draw, you then cast this, see exactly what they've got in hand and know how to play accordingly. Um and it replaces itself. So it's not bad. Like, I can see the scene play, but probably not in a standard environment. Maybe just a new occasional sealed deck or a very specific deck. We then have Ancestral Recall. One mana, draw three cards. It's broken. Ancestral Recall is probably the strongest cantrip in the game by far. It's one of the strongest cards in the game. One mana, draw a card. Draw another card would even be insane. But this is draw free cards and the instant speed. Completely broken, strongest cantrip, no argument against it. One of the power nine. It's a pretty obvious why. Insane. Reach through the mists. One mana instant arcane, draw a card. It is an arcane, nevertheless, literal garbage. Never sees play anywhere. There are there's that one abomination thing where if you cast reach through the mists and two other cards, you get it for free. Outside of that specific deck, and even that's very weak, one mana instant to draw a card, even if it's an arcane, not playable ever. Just no, no extra abilities, there's so many better options. Like, peak, even, even peak, so just strictly better. Or opt, insanely better. Or an ancestral recall, I probably shouldn't compare stuff to that, way better. Ray of Erasure, one mana instant, target player mills one, and you draw a card at the beginning of the next turn's upkeep. I think this is also literal garbage. Now, it's not, but it is. One mana to mill one, draw a card, might make it to the mediocre tier, but you don't draw the card till the next update, so it doesn't help with storm-based things, um, and won't help you draw into something you need if you need it immediately, um, and it's just milling one card, which is very insignificant. It's literal garbage, not playable. Now we have Repeal. Repeal is kind of sceptical. It's the only, I think, X cost I included. It's one mana to draw a card and X to return target non-land permanent with CMC X to its owner's hand. Um, I reckon Repeal's probably solid tier. It's it's not insane, 
but it does definitely see a reasonable amount of play. I could maybe put it in insane, but I doubt it. It's solid. Like what, for example, a blue and zero to bounce a non-land permanent with CMC zero, that, that's really viable for it. Really strong in that case. X and a one to bounce something with CMC one is really good. For example, this can just destroy a token. Um, One mana, draw a card, destroy target token, which is very strong. Um, Just about makes the insane tier strong, solid reveal. Sorceress Sight. Um, one mana, look at target's opponent's hand, draw a card. Um, literal garbage. Um, just not playable. Uh, it's the same as Peak, which already isn't very good, except it's Sorcery Speed, which almost completely ruins the point of it. Um, of course, it's pro- I'd say it's probably about there. Not... Or is it? Maybe it's better than Ray of Erasure. And maybe Ray of Erasure is worse than... Reach for the miss. I'm not entirely sure. I think I'll keep it like that for now. But really, not not playable at all. Um, just yeah, it's just I don't know. It can be viable. Like turn one drop, you get to look at their hand, draw a card. You think of it that way, and it's not bad. But it just I don't think it's strong at all. Um, serum visions. Serum visions. Draw a card. Scry two. I reckon that's right up there in the insane tier. It's arguable whether... There's an argument between Serum and Visions and Opt, though, right? Because Serum Visions is draw a card, scry two. Opt is scry one, draw a card, so you get to scry first. Um, and Opt is instant speed. I reckon Serum Visions is slightly stronger, just a little bit more value. Um, but not by much, very marginal between Serum Visions and Opt. Like, I could see a lot of people who prefer Opt. It really depends on the deck. We then have Shadow Rift. Target creature um, can't be blocked except by creature. One mana instant target creature gains Shadow, which pretty much well, it can't be blocked except by other creatures with Shadow, which pretty much means it can't be blocked, and you get to draw a card. I reckon that's bottom of solid tier. Um, yeah, it's, it's not bad. Like, one mana target creature can't be blocked this turn, draw a card. It's, it's, it's not bad. I That's quite strong. In a sealed environment, that's very strong. Um, yeah, sealed environment, that's very strong. And in a, a lot of standard decks, I could see the same play. For example, I know the big Simic decks, um, big blue-green decks that have been ramping around recently. Um, it's definitely not weak, but it's... Not not too strong either. There's a lot of decks because a lot of decks that run cat trips normally don't run many creatures. So in that situation, um, it's yeah not very useful. And it can also be used to target creature can't block this turn. That is quite useful as well if you're going on the aggressive. So it's far from weak, but just solid tier. Fort Scour. Now this is just a way better ray of erasure. Mills for two rather than one, and draws you the card straight away. Fort Scour, I don't think it quite makes insane, because it's got less uses than Opt and Serum Visions, but I think top is solid. It depends on the deck. There are certain decks where Fort Scour is way up there, like almost as strong as Ancestral Recall in the specific decks, but those are the decks built around it specifically, more graveyard-based decks, and in general, it's, it's not bad. Like, there are a lot of decks where this is just a good include, even if you're not really graveyard-based. It's good in mill-based environment as well. But it's not insane. I reckon it's the top of solid, but doesn't quite make the insane very strong tier. Twisted Image. Switch target creature's power and toughness until end of turn. Draw a card. This is... Hmm, this one's quite sceptical, actually. I reckon that's bottom of solid. Um, similar to Shadow Rift, it can be really useful, but normally doesn't see play, and um, most decks wouldn't use it because they're not creature-based. But this can instantly destroy anything with zero power. Um, it can it can be quite a useful combat trick at times, trick up a creature um, and get in to win that combat. It's definitely, it's not weak once again, but it's not too, too strong, if you know what I mean. That its uses are limited the decks that would actually put it in. But the ones it works in, it is really good. Similar to Fort Scout and Shadow Rift. Visions of Beyond. One mana, draw a card. If the graveyard has 20 or more cards in it, draw three cards instead. 
So it's a reach through the mists, if not worse, um, if you don't have it online, which would put it there, but it's an ancestral recall if you do have it online. So um, I reckon then deserves to go smack bang right in the middle. Um, it's quite good in EDH in particular. I run this in both my jewelry and Storm deck because I'll cast tons of little spells. I fill up my graveyard and this will often be a one minor draw free. And I also run this in my Geyser and Giralf deck. I didn't used to, but I do now because almost always, if this is if it's really turn five, turn six or later, this will be a one mana draw three cards, which is really strong. But then if you're not really running a Miller based deck or really heavily dredged graveyard based deck in, for example, modern or standard, 90% of the time in 60 card games, you're not going to get this online. So that's why it's smack bag in the middle. Whispers of the Muse. One mana instant, draw a card, and it also has buyback. So if you cast it for six, you then get to return it to your hand. So this can be seven mana draw two as well. And then you can keep looping it. I reckon that's... I, it could go in the solid, but I reckon it's mediocre tier. Um, one mana draw a card, it pretty much does. is just really bad, like Reach for the Mists can generate you repeated of value late game, which makes it probably stronger in EDH. Like, I can see me running this in a lot of my EDH decks. In fact, it could be viable in my draw in. I don't currently have it. But in most 60-card games, it's way too slow and grindy. Just for the one mana draw a card early on, that's really weak. And late game, it does generate a bit of value. But even then, you're paying, what, seven mana for two cards, or 13 for free. So... It does get very pricey. It can get a bit of value, but in my opinion, this is also the mediocre tier. Just stuff that see that could be playable, but not really. Aura finesse. Now this one's really skeptical because it says attach target aura you control to target creature. Um, draw a card. If you're an aura based deck, this is quite quite strong. Your creature's about to die. You suddenly save your aura. Plus this replaces itself, or you can trip them up in a combat trick if you have an aura. But outside of that, um, it's completely useless, pretty much. So I reckon this this also goes in the mediocre tier. If you're running an aura deck, it's way up there, top of insane, maybe even broken tier. But outside of that, it's very poor. Um, yeah, so it, it depends on your deck, of course. I'm going to keep it there just because 99% of decks aren't aura decks. Well, at least outside of Commander, it might be like 10% in Commander or something. But um, its uses are, yeah, quite limited outside of that. The reason why it, yeah, the reason why it's out of literal garbage is because Aura decks do exist, and it's insane in those. Brainstorm. Brainstorm, our second... Doesn't make it to Broken. I reckon Brainstorm's either at the top of Insane or Broken, but I'm going to say Broken. Brainstorm, it's essentially... A, appears on the surface as a strictly worse ancestral recall. One mana draw free, then put two cards from your hand on top of your library in any order. Um, but it's not. It's got there's nothing else really com to compare brainstorm to. It's so utility. Um, you get a dig free and then essentially have access to those free cards for all the turns. You don't necessarily get card advantage, but it's at worst card neutral. It's hard to explain, but Brainstorm really good, um, just so useful, so utility, and as well as being, this is probably what put it in from the top of Insane into Broken, is Miracle, one of the strongest starts you can have in Magic, is a Brainstorm into Temporal Mastery Miracle on turn 2, you've suddenly essentially played just about an Ancestral Recall into Time Warp, if you have Brainstorm plus Temporal Mastery, I get that off a lot of game, and Brainstorm digging three cards deep really helps you to get a good chance of hitting a Temporal Mastery. Um, is what, if you've got a Brainstorm in your starting hand, there's almost, a f and you're running four Temporal Masteries, there's like a 50% chance, over 50% chance, that you get hit that extra turn Miracle on turn two, which is so strong. Um, yeah, just that combo alone is very good. Um, Brainstorm broken. Now we have careful study. One mana, draw two cards, then discard two cards from your hand. It's a sorcery. You're losing cards on it. 
unless it's a madness deck, really. This is essentially a faithless looting. Um, faithless looting is instant speed. I think it is. It's essentially faithless looting without instant speed and without the flashback. That just makes it so much worse. I actually reckon that might even be worse than Reach Through the Mists. I'm putting that at the very bottom of literal garbage. Draw two, then discard two. Nah. Just not strong at all. Fleeting Distraction. One mana, target creature gets minus one, minus so into end of turn, draw a card. I reckon Fleeting Distraction, top of mediocre tier. Um, quite good. Can uh, In some situations, it can just trip, trip up a combat and make it turn a combat from a trade or your creature dying into... Um, into a positive outlook, and it replaces itself, itself, which is quite good. Can be used on the defense to um, gain your life, essentially, um, or trick up something that doubles a creature's power, for example. Does have a bit of utility and replaces itself, but on its own, not very strong. If you're not running a creature-based deck, it's normally just one mana, gain a life, draw a card, which isn't horrend horrendous, it's not bad. And you also, the other thing is you actually need a creature to target with this. Um, if there's not a creature, you can't cast it. So that is a big downside as well. But when it does it, when it does pull off, real good, gets tons of value. But a lot of the time, it's not versatile, if you know what I mean. Carulean Wisps. One mana, target creature becomes blue, untap it, until end of turn, untap it, draw a card. Um... I reckon that is also literal garbage. Um, there are decks like Merfolk decks, I think. Or is it even playable in Merfolk decks? I don't know. It can be used to manipulate the color of a creature to get some value. And it does untap it. But really, in my opinion, the amount of times this is going to be useful is so low. You also need a creature to target it. It's just not strong. Illusion of Choice. Now, this is kind of skeptical because it only really works on conspiracy cards. One mana instant, you choose how each player votes this turn, draw a card. Now, in EDH, you're about to cast an expropriate, you then cast Illusion of Choice, and you have to turn it into a 10 mana, four extra turns, draw a card. Um, or if you cast Illusion of Choice on, there's another one, it's four mana. Um, each player votes, one, one, if one side wins, you draw three cards, if the other ones you get an extra turn. Uh, it can be used to turn that into a five mana extra turn draw a card spell. Um, really, yeah, it can manipulate and turn voting cards into insane bombs. Um, but outside of that, it's not played in 60 card. But when it, it does get off, it's really strong, like insanely strong. I think I'm just going to put it in mediocre tier. Just because if you're not running voting cards, of course, it's completely rubbish. But um, Or you can use it to counter an enemy's expropriate, make all of them be game control, which can be significant. But um, yeah, outside of that, not really used. Cloak of Feathers. One mana gives any one creature flying. Draw a card. I reckon this is also mediocre tier. Um... Yeah, mediocre tier. I reckon it's all right. Like, if you're a creature deck, it's quite good giving a creature flying, getting over for a bit of extra damage and drawing a card. But it is sorcery speed and not really going to see any play outside of those creature decks. So it's solid in a creature-based deck. Just fly over on your turn, replace itself. But outside of that, not so much playable. Disrupt. Now, I've never actually seen this card until I was looking into cantrips and I was like, oh, um, it's kind of thin, but when it does pull off so much value, you're getting two for one on a one mana card, counter, and drawing a card, I actually think this belongs in insane. One mana, counter target instant or sorcery unless its controller pays one, draw a card. So worst case scenario is, um, they're casting instant or sorcery, they have to, they pay a mana and you draw a card. Even that, if it said target opponent taps an untapped land they control, you draw a card. That would be um, real solid on its own. Um, but then there's also times when they're tapped out. Early game, for example, they're playing a turn one cantrip, turn one bolt, turn one burn spell, um, anything like that. Bam, just counter the turn one play and replaced itself. 
that is just so much value for that. But there are a lot of situations where it won't really have a use. Like often I have, well, no, I've never actually played the card, but um, I can see games having where your enemies just cast in no instance of sorcery spells and you end up paying, essentially casting this as trying to counter your own thing, then paying one for essentially a two mana draw card. So it is a little bit narrower than the other cards, but when it does pay off, it pays off big time. Ponder. Ponder, ponder, ponder. I think ponder is also... Ooh, actually this is a hard one. Ponder, I think it's also broken tier. Um, or is it? Is it broken? That's the thing. Like, what's better? Um, ponder or preordained? That's actually a really hard one. Um, I reckon Ponder, I'm going to keep it in broken tier for now. Ponder is a one mana sorcery. Look at the top three cards of your library, then put them back in any order you may shuffle. Um, so, oh, no, I reckon Ponder is insane. Ponder is top of insane tier, though. Very, very strong. Ponder, you get to rearrange the top three cards of your deck and draw a card. This is somewhat similar to Brainstorm, not quite as useful because it's also not an instant, but similar to Brainstorm, or you can shuffle your whole deck up if you don't like what you see um, and then draw a card. So it does give you a lot of versatility on the one card, manipulates your next few draws real well, um, but I don't think it's quite as strong as Ancestral Recall or Brainstorm. It's insane. Like I think it's banned and it's either not legal or banned and modern. Um, it's yeah, very strong card ponder. Gataxian Probe. Now, Gataxian Probe, this is... Gataxian Probes are broken. Um, you can either cast it as one mana, look at target player's hand, draw a card, which is the card, one of the essential sorcerer's site, which is the top of the literal garbage tier, or you can cast it as pay to life, look at target player's hand, draw a card. In that case... It's zero mana, draw a card, also get a somewhat useful effect. This is so strong. Imagine um, it puts a card in your graveyard for nothing, loses you life. So in like Deep Shadows decks, Gataxian Probe was one of the key cards. It is just so strong. Z zero mana, um, potentially. And if you don't want to lose a life, you can also just pay the one mana as well. Very versatile in that aspect. Like there, there were a lot of decks in Modern before it got banned. That would just, they wouldn't even be running blue. They'd just play Attack Sim Pro. That's how strong it is. Um, very strong. I don't quite think it beats out Brainstorm, but it's up there. Um, Portent. Um, one mana sorcery. Look at the top three cards of the target player's library. Put them back in any order. You may have that player shuffle their library, draw a card at the beginning of next turn's upkeep. So Portent. It's essentially a ponder, except you, it's, it's a ponder, except you can also target your opponent's library, but you don't get to draw the card until the next turn's upkeep. Um, I think it's even stronger, um, in terms of the, is it stronger? No, oh, I don't, not even stronger. I think it's the, the looking effect on their deck is so good. Um, I think it's slightly weaker than Ponder, just because Ponder you get to draw the card instantly, but it's close. Portent, um, it looks, your opponent's library, you look at the, they're getting mana flooded. Let's say you drop this on turn, oh, this is a really good example. Gataxian Probe turn one into Portent. You know exactly what their hand is, what they're looking for. You then Portent the top three of your deck, of their deck, completely stuff all their drawers, know their next 10 cards, almost exactly how they're going to play, and you haven't lost a single card in the process. I think that sums up Portent pretty well for you. Um, manipulating their drawers is so strong, better than yours, um, because you make them as worse as possible, um, in my opinion. Uh, you don't get to draw the card instantly, but you still get card advantage. It's not quite as strong as Ponder, because drawing that card instantly is just so much so strong, being able to storm off, things like that, but portent, it's pretty close second. And now we have leap. 
Um, Leap, it's essentially, what was the card? Essentially Cloak of Feathers, except instant speed. So, I'll excuse that noise. I think, I think that goes at the bottom of solid tier. Um, can be really useful, but because it is instant speed, using the defense or the offense, um, draw a card, but you do need a creature in play to cast it. Um, but in creature-based decks, just like Twisted Image and Shadow Rift, it is really solid. Like these ones here, they're some of the strongest if you're on a creature-based deck, um, or your enemies using a creature-based deck, but they're some of the weakest if you're not. So they are kind of, that's why they're the middle of the line. Preordain. Oh, Preordain. Now this is probably going to be the hardest decision for me, I'm sorry. Preordain, it's somewhere at the top of Insane or Broken tier. Now Preordain is, compare it to Opt, um, or Serum Visions, which is real strong. Preordain Scry 2, then draw a card. Simply getting the Scry before the draw is so much, so strong. Um, although... Serum Visions, you get to look at free cards all of the time. Preordain, often only two. But, in general, it's so much stronger. Um, I think, yeah. In fact, I might actually drop Disrupt down to Solid, because really, it's not on the same tier as Insane. These ones here are all so strong. I think Preordain goes there in the Insane tier. Um... But there is, I I don't think I can put it up any higher. I don't think it's stronger than Ponder. Um, because I reckon the effect Ponder, Ponder gives is slightly stronger than a Scry 2. But only ever so slightly. In fact, might just make it about there, I reckon. Slightly stronger than Portent, um, in general. Uh, it could, it could, yeah, it definitely could, um, be in the Broken tier. But if I move Preordain up, I'd also move Ponder up, which I don't quite think they're on just not quite the same level as the Broken cards. Um, obsessive Search. Draw a, one mana, draw a card, and then it has Madness. Um, it's not bad. Like, well, it is. It is bad. But, for example, your opponent's making you discard a card. You can essentially say, no, I'm not going to discard a card. I'm going to instead cast this one mana draw a card. So it essentially turns a discard into a draw card. So if you're madnessing it for one, you're essentially getting two cards. But otherwise, you're just getting one. Um, I think it's... I think it's just there in the mediocre, mediocre tier. Most of the time... It's just one mana draw a card. It can pay off if you're using a discard based deck, having to discard, etc. For example, Obsessive Search plus Faithless Looting. Or Kef of course, you're not going to be running Careful Study because it's so bad. But Obs Faithless Looting into Obsessive Search, that's that's quite a nice combo there. Um, you essentially turn it into a draw one mana draw free discard too. Um, yeah, so it it's, does have its uses. But really, I actually think Peak's a little bit stronger. It does have its uses, but really, they're, they're very slim uses. It's not literal garbage. I can see decks where this would be run, but not many of them. Quicken. One mana instant. The next sorcery card you cast become, gets flashed, it becomes an instant, and draw a card. Realistically... Is it lit? It depends on the deck for Quicken, because it replaces itself, and you can just cast it for one mana and draw a card. And normally, the things that you get sorceries, of course, they're not as strong as instants. Normally, you see more instants being played than sorceries. There are a few cards that are insane if you can play them at instant speed, like a board wipe, completely abuse it. Um, but a lot of the time, it's just going to be one mana draw a card. And, like, if you look at the other cantrips, which is often what you'd think you'd be running this aside with, like a Storm deck, really, the ones that would be util util utilizing are Gataxium Probe, these four, um, that's about it. So, really, it does have its uses, but I think it's also just maybe at the top of the mediocre tier. Um, 
it does have its uses and can really abuse some cards, but normally it is quite weak. And finally we have Aquatex Will. P puts a flood counter on target land and it becomes an uh, um, island in addition to its other types. If you control a merfolk, draw a card. It is also tribal, so this puts two card types into your graveyard. But outside of merfolk decks, it's not playable. Uh, at all. At all. It's real strong in merfolk decks, but with all the island walk, but outside of that, it's really not playable. I'm putting it at the top of literal garbage, because merfolk decks, it's right up there on the insane tier. But outside of that, it doesn't see any play. But yeah, that concludes the list. Um, I think I've done them roughly uh, each of the tiers in power order. So really, I think this is... You've got the broken tier, which are completely broken. Um, of course, Ancestral Recall is in a whole nother level. It's stronger than... It's stronger than the next two best cantrips casting both of them combined. Or is it? Yeah, it's probably about the same strength as casting the next two cantrips combined. That's how strong it is. Um, it's it's very... Ancestral Recall is just on a whole other level. That's number one. Number two, Brainstorm, closely followed by Cataxium Probe. Way down from Ancestral, though. Closely followed by the Ponder, Preodane, and Portent, I reckon. Those are kind of closely. Then quite a substantial drop down to Serum Visions and Opt, both really close. Once again, quite a substantial drop down to the next two. Um, relative substantial drop then, again, throughout the rest of Solid Tier. Um, and then it drops down to really the mediocre cards are not very good. But no, that's my list there of all the all the cantrips. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you want to see more videos like this, Make sure to leave a like and subscribe, and I hope to see you next time.